The next topic is the column space of a matrix. Let me start with an example to sort of motivate what this is all about. So let me come up, start with a three by four matrix, A equals, and I'm just gonna put the columns four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now then, the columns, as you can see, we have four columns. One, two, three, four. The column space for A is defined as the following. It's the span of the vectors that make up the columns of the matrix. Now since the column space is a span of vectors, it's automatically a subspace. And you can see, since there are three rows in each vector, that each of these vectors is from R3. So keep that in mind. A column space of A is a subspace of R3. And remember, that's because it's the span of a set of vectors. So remember that automatically means it's a subspace. So now with this matrix, suppose, suppose we wish to determine if there is a solution to a x equals some vector b. So it's, I'm still using the same a as I was previously. So can we find a vector x for which that's true? Well, if we're going to find something like this, let me break things down into the components. The a, let me rewrite it. OK. My, Vector x has to have four coordinates so that it matches the number of columns in this matrix so that the matrix multiplication is even defined. So I'll use like I usually do. This will be my vector x. And we want that times that to equal some vector b. And remember, b will have three components. Now, let me go ahead and multiply this out and then write it down in a set of equations. So when I take this first row and multiply it by this vector, here's what I get. I get x plus 4y plus 7z plus 10w. That will equal b1. The next row will have 2x plus 5y plus 8z plus 11w, that should equal b2. And then finally, 3x plus 6y plus 9z plus 12w should equal b3. The reason I put it in there because I think it's easier to see when I convert it to matrix to, to uh, vector format what it looks like. So that's what I'm going to change this to a vector format. So what I have, if I look at vectors, I have x, 2x, 3x, plus 4y, 5y, 6y, plus 
7z, 8z, 9z, plus 10w, 11w, 12w, and that's supposed to equal b1, b2, b3. Let me take it one step further. From each of these vectors, I'm going to factor out a scalar. In the first, in the first vector here, I'm going to factor out the scalar x. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to factor it out. Same with the second vector, I'm going to factor out a y. And I'll continue in the same fashion for the rest of these. I'm uh, missing a W in there. Let's put that W, sneak it in there. So what we have here then, if you think of x, y, and z, and w as just scalar multiples, what we have on the left side of this equation is a linear combination of the columns of the matrix. Of course, that's just b on the other side. So if I'm going to have any chance of a solution, I need the vector b to be in the span of these vectors. So to have a solution B itself must be in the column space of A it must be in the span of the column vectors now let me work on a little bit of theory here this is where we won't have concrete examples but we're going to let A be an M by N matrix and let B be in RM. In order for a solution X to exist in the equation A, uh, AX equals B, we need B to be in the column of A. And it's really simple. If you uh, think of the matrix A in this format, suppose A equals, um, uh, if I break it into column vectors, like I did in the last example, I don't know how many of them I'll have. But since it's an M by N matrix, I have to have N columns. And then uh, B will have M rows. So B I'll set equal to B1, B2, Bn. Now then when I take and look at AX, equals b and let's assume that if I'm going to find an x it has uh, coordinates x1 through xn well then when I break this out into c1 c2 dot 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 cn and I'm going to multiply it to the x the vector x x1 x2 dot 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 xn That equals, now I made a mistake on B. This is actually has M rows. And when you multiply it out, it's easy to see you're going to get X1, C1, plus X2, C2. As you saw in the last example, if you need to try some more examples to make sure you can see this but it's a nice quick way of multiplying this out and I'll switch back to the vector B so you can see clearly that B 
has to be in the column of A. So we're realizing by now that I did not actually define what uh, column space was. Let me do it right now. This will be a definition. So if A equals, and this is where A is in, where I'm breaking it up into column format, then the column space of A equals the span of those column vectors. Another way you can look at it, there, there are, there's more than one way to look at these things and, and, I, and that's pr problematic for this course because it can get a bit dizzying after a while because the, the, there's about seven or eight ways to look at what seems like should only be one idea. But before I go any further, let me prove a theorem. Theorem looks like this. Column of A, column space of A is a subspace of R to the M. And that was back, uh, I probably, the whole time, well, let me do this. I'll say A is in, or A is an M by N matrix. I just want to remind you of that. So the M tells us the number of rows that each of these things has to have. And of course, N is the number of columns. So column of A is a subspace of R to the M. And... Well, I don't know if there's much to prove here. Uh, the proof is very simple. Uh, column of A is the span of vectors. So it's a subspace. So not much to do there. But another variation on this, if you think about, look at the... Uh, each time that I do an AX, that is a vector I'm sticking with the M by N notion of A. So A is an M by N, X is an N by 1. So this produces an M by 1 matrix. Or if you want, a column vector with M rows. So, so each of these, uh, if you put in a different X, you will produce a different vector. So we could do this. I could call the column space the set of all AXs such that X is in RM. So there's another way to look at it. So as X varies, you'll get different vectors for this multiplication. Another description is the following. We could look at column of A as being the set of all vectors B in R to the N, M, sorry, such that B equals AX for some X in RN. So you see, these seem kind of weird, but they are two different versions of the same thing. And then up here, this is the definition. So you've got the definition, and then we have equivalent um, forms for the column space. Each of these will have their own uses. It just depends on the circumstance. Let me do an example to hopefully illustrate some things. So I want you to consider the set.
let's see, I have b minus c, 2b plus c plus d, and then I have 5c minus 4d, and then finally a d. Let me fix that d. So these are vectors with four rows, and each of the letters, b, c, and d, are real numbers. Now let me rewrite this set in the following format to make it quite explicit what I want to do with it. Now look at the first coordinate here. It has no d but it has a b and a c. So what I want to do is this. I want to write 1b minus 1c plus 0d. Then I'll tackle the next row. It has everything there as far as the variables. So I'll have 2b plus 1c plus 1d. And then the third row I have no b so I'll write 0b plus 5c minus 4d. And then finally there's only a d in the last row so I have 0b plus 0c plus 1d. And of course, B, C, and D are real numbers. Now we've done examples like this before. You should be able to recognize the following. I'll have uh, 1, 2, 0, 0 times B plus uh, negative 1 1, 5, 0 times C plus 0, 1, 4, 1 times D. And I think I forgot a negative. Let me put the negative in there. Such that B, C, and D are real numbers. Now if you remember, this is equal to the span of those vectors. 1, 2, 0, 0, comma, negative 1, 1, 5, 0, zero 1, negative 4, 1. So now what we have then is this will equal the column space of a matrix if the matrix is equal to, well, a 4 by 3 matrix with exactly these columns. Let me do uh, one last example here. This is a short video as well. Uh, what's going to happen is the next video will sort of tie everything together between the null space and the column space. But for now, let me finish off this. And I want you to consider the two systems of equations, that is. So my first system, I'll have a 5x plus y minus 3z equal to 0. Then I'll have negative 9x plus 2y plus 5z equals 1. And then 4x plus y minus 6z equals 9. Now, uh, this has I don't really care about that what the solution is all I care about is that it actually does have a solution so let's say it has a solution X and you should know that X has to have 
three rows to match the number of columns if this were to be turned into a matrix. Now, the question that I have Does the system, 5, negative 9, 4, these are the x's, uh, 1, 2, 1 for the y's, and then finally negative 3, 5, negative 6, these are all attached to the z's, and this vector, the uh, I guess you call it the solution vector. Uh, I have 0, 5, 45. So does that system have a solution? Now obviously I don't want you to actually work this thing. I want you to use some of our theory to prove whether it does or does not have a system. So take a look. Keep in mind, I tried to put this out so you can see the columns quite explicitly. If I were to make this into a matrix A, you can see there's our first column, our second column, and our third column. So take a look at this vector here versus uh, this vector here. So let's say this is the solution to the problem. We are given AX equals 0, 1, 9 as a solution. Well, then check this out. Um, then A, if I put a 5 in front of it, That will equal uh, 0, 5, 45. So this will be the vector for the other one. And now we know that I can bring this 5 inside to change this to a 5x. So in fact, it does have a solution. Uh, So in fact, it does have a solution. And that's because the set of Bs, uh, I know you can pull this in, but this is just one of those things where the set of Bs uh, being, you know, they form the column space, the, the collection of possible Bs are e is equal to the column space. That means they're closed under scalar multiplication. So I know if X is a solution, where'd it go? If X is a solution, then I know that a, any constant multiple of that solution is also a solution and this is all because those B's form a subspace.